Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to Spirit Speakeasy. I'm Joy Giovanni, joyful medium. I'm a working psychic medium, energy healer, and spiritual gifts mentor. This podcast is like a seat at the table in a secret club, but with mediums, mystics, and the spiritual luminaries of our time. So come behind the velvet ropes with me and see inside my world as I chat insider style with profoundly gifted souls. We go deep, share juicy stories, laugh a lot, and it wouldn't be a speakeasy without great insider secrets and tips. You might even learn that you have some gifts of your own. So step inside the spirit speakeasy. Hey, beautiful soul, welcome in for another episode of Spirit Speakeasy. As promised this year, we've got some really exciting guest interviews, and today is no exception. And in just a moment, we are going to hear from today's guest, Heather Lee Strom. She wrote a book that's called Canine Spirit Guides, The Healing Power of Man's Best Friend. And it's not what you probably think at first listen to that title that it is. It's not about our animal guides. It's about the guides that work with the canine animals in our lives to assist us. So guides for us that work through our animals. She's so gracious in this interview to let me ask all of my questions. Well, as many as we could get to. Um, I could have gone on forever. As you guys know, I have lots of questions and I read the book and I loved the book and had so many thoughts and and questions and dots connecting for me as I read it. So I'm really excited to share her with you. She so openly shares about her own personal story. And I love that she's not someone who knew that she had these gifts or these guides all along. So she shares about that too. I'm sure that you'll be able to see yourself in her story if you choose to read this book and certainly will identify with a lot of the emotions and fears that she shares through her journey. So without further ado, let's get right into it and let me introduce to you today's guest, Heather Lee Strong. Welcome back for another episode of Spirit Speakeasy. We have a treat today. We have an award-winning author. I'm going to read her intro and bio, and then I'm so excited to launch into this conversation with Heather Lee Strom. You may have thought that your dog was just here to be your loving, supportive, and joyful playmate, but your pup is potentially much, much more than that, according to Heather Lee Strom. Your pet could be the physical conduit for your canine spirit guide. If you've had dogs, you've maybe thought of this on your own. Um, mm -hmm. In her groundbreaking book, Canine Spirit Guides, The Healing Power of Man's Best Friend, Heather Lee reveals that these unique spiritual energies are here to guide us on our journeys of healing, growth, wisdom, transformation, and spiritual evolution for our own ascendance. And the ones that choose to enter your life through your pet are divinely matched to you to teach you what your soul's calling to learn. But Heather Lee would only discover this for herself and for humanity after having passed through many decades of deeply difficult life, beginning with a verbally abusive and emotionally unavailable father, then her journey through poverty, crippling accidents, loss, and so much more, fueled by sheer determination and will, pain, and repressed rage, she nevertheless created three highly successful careers <laughs> in dog training, physical therapy, and cycling. And today, Heather Lee Strom will share part of her story of how her canine companions each came to her with specific gifts at a specific time to move her towards her own healing and a joyful life, and how she's become the channel through which the canine spirit guides are bringing their message and frequency of healing and transcendence to us all. Uh, as you know, of course, I'll link all of her contact points in the show notes, but welcome in Heather Lee. How are you today? Thank you, Joy. I'm terrific. Thank you for so, having me. Oh, thank you for being here. It's so wonderful to talk to you right before we press record. I was just telling you how much I enjoyed your book. I feel like there's so much packed into what is under a 400 page book. It's, <laughs> it's not a terribly <laughs> difficult read, but it's just so jam packed. Yeah. Yeah. One of the beautiful things that you actually disclose in the book it, is that it was these canine spirit guides that helped you understand how the book was to be ordered and the information you were to share. How amazing yeah. is that? Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea any of this was coming. And that was 
that made it even more spectacular. <laughs> I bet. Would you kind of start at the beginning and give us a little bit of overview? One of the things I just loved among many was that you wouldn't have really necessarily identified as a spiritual person yourself through the journey of your life and what a journey it was. Will you share yeah. a little bit about your journey to get to even understanding that these guides are working with you? Yeah, it's been an incredible journey. And I just keep pinching myself, you know, because it, it just seems so surreal. And, um, you know, I grew up a preacher's daughter. <laughs> uh, I never fit in. And I was a very, um, what do you say? I was a wounded child, so I didn't speak very much. And because of that, I didn't know how to interact with people. I didn't have very many friends. And my dogs were really my only source of companionship and friendship for a long time. And uh, thankfully, I had them at least. But um, I had a lot of wounds from my childhood that I I knew were there, but I didn't know what to do about them. You know, like a lot of people, I spent a long time in my adulthood searching for answers. Why was it the way it was? What can I do about it? How can I resolve these feelings? What do I do now? And I've, I turned over every stone. I read every book. I did every self-help technique and every affirmation, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to resolve all of this. I knew it was eating me up inside and I couldn't find a way out of it. So I tried to just go on. And what I disclose in the book is how obviously this does not work. <laughs> wow. And it, it bleeds into other parts of our lives. It becomes transformed into some other um, part of us that we don't like. You know, um, it has to be expressed and it has to be dis um, healed and dissolved before you're done with it. So um, I found my way into the medical profession because that felt like a safe place to be, a very logical place. And I was always very, very curious about the body. So I spent 30 years as a physical therapist, a Reiki practitioner, massage therapist, functional medicine practitioner. I just kept reinventing myself because I never feel like I know enough. Um, but it just never was enough. You know, it just... I, working with the physical body only got me so far as far as my clients go and also with myself. And I'm, I just knew there was something else there. And the first dog in the book, Tori, was instrumental in, in this whole process kicking off. She was the most recent dog that I had. And when she died, it literally broke me. And I swore I would never have any more dogs. It, you know, I've, I'd had 30 dogs up to that point. And for some reason, she was the straw that broke my back. I just was done. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a choice in that matter, <laughs> which, yeah. which is revealed in the book. But, um, but when she died, it was a shift of sorts. And this started a time period for me that I describe as a cocoon. It was a, it was a dark place, although I didn't know it was a dark place. I just felt really lost and I felt lonely and I didn't have any direction. And it took 11 years in this, this whole, this stewing of this cocoon, which I didn't know that's what it was at the time until it burst open. Um, but through these 11 years, I became more and more desperate to find myself, to find the answers to discover why am I here? Because as far as I was concerned, the world was a terrible place. <laughs> yeah. Why am I here? <laughs> and I couldn't understand other people that were very positive about the world and had these wonderful relationships with other people because I had never experienced that for myself. So um, I just learned after the fact that this was very critical in sort of preparing me for this major explosion that was about to happen. And after the fact, you know, 2020 hindsight, it all made sense. But I tell you, during that that 11 year period, I was very miserable. I describe it kind of as um, an eczema on the inside of your skin. Like you oh, just wow. can't reach it and you can't figure out what it is and what's causing it. And it's this constant irritation. So um, ironically, what put an end to this time period was during COVID lockdown, 
when we were all shut into our homes and I did have, I had one daughter left of, of Tori, the dog that I referred to. Mm -hmm. Um, she had left me with two of her babies and I still had her left. So she and I were out in the yard one day and we stumbled upon something really, truly amazing. Uh, I don't know how many of you know what a conjoined twin is. Have you ever heard that? I, think, I know you've read I think the book. Most people will probably know what it was. And that really was such a profound way that you kind of tiptoed into this whole unfolding of everything. So go ahead and share about yeah. that. That was such a cool, interesting yeah. part of the book. Um, a conjoined twin, of course, is the, the lay term for it is a Siamese twin. So um, in my yard, I found a conjoined squirrel that they were joined at the back and they were about halfway grown and it looked like they had fallen from the nest, which was quite a ways up. Yeah. They had parts of the nest intertwined within them, around them. So it looked like they had literally just grown into their nest until they finally got too heavy and just fell. And it, it appeared that their mother had kept feeding them because they weren't emaciated. Half of this squirrel was already dead and was swollen. The other half was still alive when I found it. And it, it, it was very startling to me. I had never seen a Siamese twin in person and it, it really tapped into my heart. And my dog was also very startled. Usually she goes after prey in the yard and she found this conjoined twin and she kind of went, Whoa, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and she didn't want anything to do with it. So she was also very affected by it. And, um, I didn't know what to do for this creature. So I just tried to put it aside where it wouldn't be harmed anymore, but I wasn't sure what to do with it. So, but what was so miraculous about this was when I saw it, this, this whole shield of energy just poured down on me and I felt this major change. And it was almost like, it was almost like a vacuum feeling. Like all of a sudden everything was just sucked off of me and I was naked and I, I felt very uncomfortable there, of course, cause I had never been naked in my life, you know, spiritually, I'd always been shrouded in, in pain and anger and resentment. You know, I'd always felt that way. So it was very uncomfortable the way I was feeling, but it also told me that something really huge was coming and I didn't know what it was. I just suddenly had this, this desire to find spiritual people that could help me through whatever was about to happen. And that is the miraculous part about us humans. You know, we have this innate ability to receive this higher knowing, even though sometimes we, we shut it off or we avoid it or we don't listen to it. If we listen to our higher selves and our intuition, it tells us a whole lot of information. So that's one thing I've always been really good at is following my intuition. And so I proceeded to do that. I proceeded to build a team having no idea why uh, that I would need over the next two years. So the lockdown was in 2020. By the end of 21, I had located the first member of my team, which was a numerologist. Shortly thereafter, I met with my mentor for the first time, who was a, um, he was a clairvoyant shaman, mystic shaman. He has lots of titles, clairvoyant mystic shaman. And he guided me through this entire process that was about to explode after meeting him. And one thing he told me was that I was going to be writing a book after he um, met with my, my soul's energy, he said, this you're about to write a book and it's got to be done this year. So I met with him uh, February of 2022 and having no idea what the book was even about, it was written by October of 20 of 2022. So it was written very quickly. And um, after that, I found with his help, I found a, um, um, well, um, I want to say anesthesiologist, but that's not like correct. A regression therapist? Is that technically? Yeah, like she was a, a therapist. Um, therapist yeah, hypnotherapist. Thank you. And also an astrologer that was incredibly talented. And when you work with her, it kind of felt like she was just reading your soul. I mean, it was yeah. just the most in depth explanation I've ever gotten of who I was and where I was going. So these key team, 
team members were really critical in helping me move forward quickly without having any doubts or fears or concerns. I mean, they just really held my hand. And what was so fascinating by it, <clears throat> by the whole process was I didn't know the canine guides were working with me this whole time. I didn't know that they had helped to handpick all of these people. I didn't know that they were working through these people with me. I, the only thing I knew was that my mentor could hear them and they would answer my questions, but they would not deliver their message to him. They would only speak to me. So that kept everything really pure and um, sacred as far as I was concerned, because I didn't want to feel like someone else was putting words in my mouth. You know, I needed to know this was coming from me. So he would answer my questions. And I always had a million questions when I met with him, um, mostly to validate what I was getting. You know, I was already channeling and had no idea. So he was able to re, um, you know, um, qualify what I was bringing to him. And I'm going, oh, that's that's correct. I didn't know that I had access to that kind of information. So it was really reassuring. But yeah, so <laughs> that's wow. kind of the story in a nutshell. I didn't have any idea I was an author or that I was going to write a book when um, the year 2022 began. So, And I love that the way that you share that in the book too, because I think it's such an important point to note that you had had, like you said, 30 dogs up to that point, yeah. and you didn't realize through that time until it was retrospective that these canine guides had been showing up through several of these beloved animals. I know you knew they were special and you knew that yeah. they were special souls in your life, but didn't realize that these guides were there and working through them and showing up for specific reasons, which you detail in the book. Will you share a little bit more... I was confused when I first picked up the book. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah. Probably maybe a lot of people are if they don't read the inside cover first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because we all think, oh, yeah, dogs are very special, you know, souls and forces in our life and and that they are guides for us. But actually, if I understand it correctly, it's that there are guides, just like, you know, spirit guides, for uh -huh. example, who are working through these amazing canines in our lives yes. to help facilitate the learning and healing that we need. Is that, am I understanding that yes. really correctly at this point? Yeah. Yeah. You did that very well. Um, and that was hard for me to understand too. So I totally, I still totally know where you're coming from because it took me a long time, probably until the very end of the book that I finally got it for the longest time. I thought I was channeling these specific dogs yeah. and it took me a while to figure out, Oh no, that's, we're going a whole nother, another layer level above that. Yeah. So the, the, the dog itself, the canine has their own soul or their own energy, their own spirit. And depending on the evolution of that particular soul will determine whether it's still a community spirit or whether they have broken out into their own individual spirit. So um, that there can be a lot of different interplay based on the particular dog as well. But they have, canines have their own spirit guides, but it differs from our spirit guides because their spirit guides are not here for them. They're here to work with humanity. So they're really our extra spirit guides that are kind of dictating and directing the relationship that transpires between the human and the dog. So um, it's really miraculous how they work together. Um, and to give you an example, I shared a story with Tori where I felt like I was being persecuted by everyone. Like no one appreciated who I was. I kept, I kept winning competitions, yet no one was giving me a pat on the back. Yeah. You know, no one was like, wow, you're incredible. You know, I want to know what you know. They would just kind of be like, yeah, okay, you want another one, go on with yourself. You know, <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was like this very dismissive attitude and it was really hurtful to me. And I didn't understand what was happening. But this dog, Tori, that I shared about first in, in my life, was the same dog that had reincarnated from my childhood when I was 12, a dog named um, Trixie. 
And she had also been trying to share this message with me because people were trying to take my trophies from me. They were giving my award to other children who didn't deserve it. I had a oh, higher my heart score. out for you in that story. Oh, with it the, was with awful. The, the miscalculation <laughs> of the points and the... Yeah. And then you had to choose, do I take this award away from someone else to because yeah. I technically won or do I, you know, now I have to crush this other, you were a yeah. little bit of an old soul, even as a kid, it seems. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, so. And it, it was just heartbreaking to me because it was like, wh why am I being treated this way? Yeah. So initially my human brain is like, people are terrible. You know, I can't win. I'm never good enough. You know, all of these emotions kept coming up, but what, Anthea, the, the spirit guide of the dog was trying to show me was that there, that part of myself, that belief that I had, the trauma that created the belief needed to be healed so that those experiences wouldn't happen anymore. And that's what was so beautiful because when I worked with her in meditation, she showed this to me and then she instantly healed it. It was just gone completely dissolved. Yeah. There are a couple That's... of little points in there I would love to ask you about. So yeah. just how you were talking about the the conjoined twin squirrel and you getting this, I guess I want to call it an intuition that, okay, something's looming here. At that point, mm -hmm. you were just maybe starting to have this awakening, but you mentioned several other times in the book having that intuition, that knowing, like you said, you didn't know what necessarily it was going to be, but that something mm -hmm. big was on the horizon. I think that's just so important to note because I think so many of us feel like, oh, maybe she had this awareness all along or, and I, I just, I hate yeah. to say it this way, but I love it that you didn't. <laughs> so does that yeah. Make sense? I didn't know it. I mean, I'd always had a very sharp intuition. I was able, as you read in the book, I was able to find dogs from all over the world yeah, that, that were incredible. calling to me. So this was my intuition. And I call it a calling. But you know, when that calling comes in, I am powerless to fight it. Yeah. And if my husband were to put his foot down and say, I'm not allowing another dog, I would have left him. I had wow. to follow the calling. Thank heavens, we never got to that point. He's always been very supportive. And he knows everything works out. I mean, even though it doesn't make sense, yeah. it works out. So um, I think we all have those tendencies, but we tend to dismiss them because we're programmed to think that it's our imagination, yeah, that so it's not true. real. Well, and like you said, to, to look back and be able to honor, okay, wait a minute, there are all these different points that I was being guided and it really just double validates what you're becoming aware of in those later parts. Yeah. You did have an experience that I'm so curious to learn more about that you share. So one yeah. of the really traumatic, tragic things that happens is during your college experience, you end up having a brain tumor that needs to be yeah. removed. And you share a little bit about how when you were under that surgery, the anesthesia, you kind of took a little journey in your soul mm -hmm. to meet your spirit team. Will you share a little bit about, oh. cause that's so many years before this 2020 yeah. experience. Yeah. You know how sometimes we'll just like, you seem to have done like, but then like, okay, that was a one-off experience. And then you went 20 more years. <laughs> yeah. Oh my Probably. gosh. And, and that was kind of the point of the meeting was because they were telling me, you still have a lot of time to go yet before you're going to be activated. And they were asking me, yeah. do you still want to stay in play or do you want to come out? Because I was struggling. Yeah. I was struggling with everything, with being myself, with, with the world. I was struggling financially, trying to just put one foot in front of another. And with my family, I didn't, I really never had family support. So, and horrible boyfriend breakups that were just yeah. eating me alive, you know? So there were so many things that I was just so destitute about and they were concerned i think <laughs> but but it was also a planned time and we all have exit points where um we meet with our council our guidance council and we review okay this is what's going on this is what you had taken on yeah. and this is you knew it was going to be hard are you sure you want to do this because the earth plane is the hardest place to live. And I truly understand that now. <laughs> um, and so some of us really take on a whole lot. I've always been a person who's taken on as much as I could. 
just because I'm a goal oriented person and I like to get things done and, you know, achieving makes me feel good about myself. So I've always been someone who liked to take it all on. And my guys were concerned about my, my goals and my objectives. And they said, are you sure you want to do this? And what was so interesting, I didn't remember that at all. I just remembered um, floating up in the ceiling, you know, as the anesthesia was coming in. Um, but I never, I didn't sleep for the next 30 years after that. Wow. Um, and I've, it, I've tried everything to sleep, drugs, meditation. I try everything. Um, and uh, what was so fascinating was when my um, astrologer read my chart and I, I described this scenario to her and she instantly put together a new chart for that event. And she said, oh, that they were meeting with you. It was an exit point and they were, you were trying to decide whether to stay or go. And ever since that surgery, I kind of felt like something happened during the surgery. I wasn't sure what, I just had this feeling that something happened and that's probably why I couldn't sleep. I wasn't sure what it was. I was kind of nervous. I thought, well, was I abused when I was under anesthesia? I mean, surely not, but something profound happened. Um, and ever since that day, it felt like my life was different. It felt like a whole different, like you take the book of life up to that point and you flip it over and it's the total opposite of everything it had been before. It was really fascinating. It felt like a do-over or a second chance. And what I describe in the book is that I went back through my whole life, the dog training, the cycling, um, I can't remember what else, uh, massage. I revisited all of that and did it over again and took it to the next level, went way beyond what I ever thought I was capable of, of going with either one of those. And it was kind of like an extension on life, really. I felt like it was a bonus. Like it was, oh, wow. you know, like a, the, it was the bonus part of my life. Had I not stayed, I wouldn't have experienced that right? I would have just had the negative oh. part of the life. Yeah, that's true. And it's so profound. I, I'm sure you don't mind me giving this spoiler, but as part of that surgery, it wasn't like you suddenly woke up and then you're the healthiest, strongest version of yourself. You then had to spend 20 years, was it, relearning all of your cognitive skills and teaching yourself to read again and learning your yeah. math, which you had excelled at previously. Yeah. And so it's so fascinating to hear you say it was this, you know, second chance, this next chapter for you. Yeah. When I know, you know, from the back end, you really were still having to work yeah. so, so hard through all of that. And then you share with us how in retrospect, you could see these canine guides showing up through additional, you know, animals who were in your life, loving you and, and being companions yeah. to yeah. assist you through that part of the journey. How incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it was really incredible. That's so special. Will you, so in the book, you share about what you call the core four, who are mm -hmm. the first four of these guides that you're introducing us to. Um, yeah. You kind of give a little trail off at the end. And, and through the book, you mentioned that there are potentially more than 50 of yeah. these guides, right? Yeah. Um, and more will be introduced in future books. So before anyone gets nervous, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've got more, more books on the way. Yeah. But in these core four, where you share a little bit about how they showed up in your life and how perhaps we can recognize them in our own beloved furry friends? Yes, I'd love to. Um, the core four, they, that's what they call themselves. And um, I didn't understand why until recently. They deal with getting down to the core, the core emotion, the core belief, you know, the core event. Um, we've got to really get down in there. We can't expand spiritually until we, what I call, dump the tanks. So we've got to remove, heal and remove the lower vibrational frequencies, which are our memories, our um, belief systems, our trauma, our pain that, that we're just holding on to energetically within our bodies. Our DNA holds our energy. So it follows us from lifetime to lifetime. So yeah. we have to resolve it before we can expand spiritually into this higher consciousness that we all seek to be. So the core four are critical in doing this because they are literally the intergalactic version of our dogs. So they come to humanity 
with these uh, expedited um, techniques for healing, like I said, that are instant, the the frequency is so much more um, advanced than anything that humanity has experienced in the past. And the reason they're coming forward now is because humanity has grown to a point where we can begin to hold it and begin to work with it. Um, and that's why it, it works so fast is because it's a whole different frequency than what we've known in the past. Wow. Um, but each guide has their own identity, their own name, their own energy, their own specialty of what they work with humanity on. And, um, I'll show you pictures of them as we go, but that. we have, um, Anthea is the first one in the book. And so the guides, um, have a conjoined image and a conjoined frequency. So they'll identify with the dog breed and also a shamanic animal, a wild animal. So we have the golden retriever and the cheetah for Anthea, who was um, Trixie and Tori's um, spirit guide and working with me on specifically on divine self-love and joy. So anything that blocked my ability to experience joy or to love myself fully, such as my, my, they, she calls them tags. So my beliefs that, yeah. you know, I'm not lovable or maybe, um, you know, I, I'm, people are persecuting me. I, d I don't deserve it. You know, those core beliefs are what she works with. She will identify them and remove them for you. Um, so, and she has a very grandma, grandmotherly energy. She's very soft and, and welcoming and comforting, a very warm energy. She works with a lot of people because she, she, she likes to get in, get in the, the trenches and work with everybody. Well, and she's what also I loved about your, sorry to interrupt you. Your story is that these core emotions that you identified, even though all of our stories are so unique and individual, these emotions of unworthiness and deservability and fear of persecution and fear of failure are common to oh, all yeah. of us. So I'm not surprised that she works with so many. Yeah. And, and she's also um, represents the divine feminine energy. So when we're able to embody our, our full divine feminine energy, we've, we've done the work with her. So we have to clear these blockages before we can hold that frequency and be a balanced feminine um, entity. So she's, she's incredible to work with. And um, I see her a lot because yeah. <laughs> um, humanity has a lot of these tags that she works with. The second guide is Oscar, and he is the black and tan coonhound, which is a very fascinating breed. Um, I didn't know much about this breed until I had to research it for him. And then the lion. And Oscar's very special. He's kind of like Aslan in, in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. His energy is very, very heavy and, and soothing and calming and reassuring. And he deals with tags as well around our voice, being able to speak our truth, being able to have a voice, our courage. And, um, you know, so many people, and this involves people who don't, who, um, are, um, oppressing others with their voice or with their power. Yeah. Um, so this has to be balanced. So it's not just the lack of, but it could be in the imbalance of, so he works with the divine masculine energy because the divine masculine is not a, a, um, a brutal masculine force. The, the divine masculine is actually just the container for the feminine. So it supports the feminine. It provides the opportunity for the feminine and it provides the space for the feminine. So until this is blended and healed, the divine feminine can't have full potential. So the two have to be present together. You have to have both, but, um, he's really magical to work with. He's very quiet. He <laughs> doesn't say very much, but his, his energy is incredibly powerful. So he'll work a lot around the throat area with some people. Um, I could give you lots of examples, but he's, um, he's, he's special. He's really special. And, uh, I was 
impressed with how he was able to free up my voice after being shut up for so long, being oppressed by my own father who wouldn't let me speak. I had no right to have an opinion, couldn't defend myself. He had to heal all of this for me so that I could stand before you now and deliver my message. Because if I'm blocked there, I can't effectively deliver my message, even if I'm speaking the words, right? It'll, there'll be an energetic block to it. So um, it's important that all of us be able to mend and heal and balance that part of us. Oh, that's wrong order. Thing, but... as, you're, as you're showing these two, I think it's important to just point out that it doesn't mean they're only necessarily showing up in these breeds of dogs like they're depicted in these right. beautiful pieces of art, but it's the energy, it's the the spirit. Is, is that yes. saying that correctly? Yes. It, this is just the, this is a representation of their energy. Yeah. So they're not going to only show up in the Basenji. You're going to any, it doesn't matter what breed of dog you have. Any of these guides could be working with you through that dog. And also they don't have to have a dog to work with you. They can work with you through me. So I'd say 75% of my clients right now don't have dogs. They're just working with the canine spirit guides. And that's a beautiful thing too, because some people don't like dogs, you know, but they want the healing, you know, so they'll work with all of humanity, but this is how they've always worked with us is through the dogs. Um, so this is Oregon and she is a pristine, highly, um, her frequency is extremely high. And she reminds me a lot of Lady Diana, like a royalty type frequency. Her voice is soft and elegant and she's really, really critical. So the first two guides worked with tags and the guides after that, none of them do. I thought I had written it wrong at first. <laughs> I'm like, where's the tags? <laughs> you know, but then they explained, well, we don't work with tags. That's just the first two guides that do that. But, um, Oregon is the Basenji and the, the, um, Black Panther, very powerful, energy. She uh, helps us to identify masks that we wear and we use. And these masks will, pro will um, we use them to project the version of us we want people to think we are. Yeah. And they also serve as a filter. So whatever's on the inside of your mask will filter your experience in life. So if you've had a, a bad run of it and you like I did, and you think that all humans are bad, then that's all you're going to see. Yeah. That's all you're going to experience in life. So until these masks are identified and removed, you can't really fully connect to your soul because you can't see it. You can't find it and you can't perceive it. And even if you did get to your soul, you wouldn't be able to see it because the mask would block that. So she dissolves these masks for us, just as she did for myself. And then once that's dissolved, she will escort you to your divine soul. And that was one experience in the book that I shared. I had never met my own soul before. And it was the most incredible energy I had ever experienced. I thought it was God. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought I was in the presence of God. I didn't know that my soul was that expansive and that pure. So it's important that humanity realigns with our soul right now, because when you're in that space of your pure divine soul, the only emotions that you're capable of are love and joy. That's it. Yeah. So if all of us walked around connected to our soul, we would have no bitterness, no anger, no war, no violence. I mean, it just wouldn't be possible. So it's really important right now that humanity connects with that part of themselves. She's really special. And she is my favorite, which is why she's on the cover of the book. <laughs> I love how you share connecting with our own soul too, because I feel like it's so, you talk about it a lot in the book, and I feel like it's so commonly misunderstood that we are separate from our higher selves. Sometimes the way yeah. I say it is like it's, it's live streaming through <laughs> through us. Yeah. But the greater part of it exists yeah. outside of us just because we can't. We're small containers. Yeah. Um, but I, I love how important you focus, you know, put the place of focus on that yeah. in the book. Yeah. It was a big revelation for me. You know, this body, this container can only hold a small fraction of our soul. Yeah. And when you take that field trip and you meet with the entire expanse of your soul, it's a real shock, yeah. you know, because we've been so disconnected from it. So, yeah, I mean, 
It's incredible. If if I want more people to experience that, to experience what I did because it was so life-changing and it would be life-changing for our whole race, for all of humanity if we could for connect sure. again, yeah, for you know. Sure. It would be incredible. Now the last guide, um he was a little bit tricky. This is Daman Yaran Eric. Um, he has three names and it took me a long time to understand that. And, yeah. and then also to be able to write it. Cause I only speak English. <laughs> <laughs> My astrologer had to help me figure out how to write his name because I, I don't, I don't roll my R's. I don't know how to spell that. You know, I I can barely pronounce his name, much less spell it, but he's truly amazing. Um, I describe in my book, um, the time when I met him was actually during an ayahuasca ceremony, a, a ceremony with a plant medicine. And it was very special. And he had waited to the very end. I had that ceremony after I finished writing the book. So I had to go back and and add that part to the book because it was just too incredible not to share. Um, but I, he had given me specific words to put in the book about him. And I blindly followed and said, okay, I'll write this down. I don't understand it. I'll write it down. Sounds great. You know? Um, but I didn't, I hadn't truly felt his energy until that time during the ayahuasca ceremony. And after I felt his energy, I suddenly realized why he had had me put those words in the book. Um, he is the bald eagle and the pug, which is a very fascinating com- uh, combination. Yes. But if you think about it, these two have the same neck <laughs> and kind That's of true. the same nose, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, but he's very special because he comes in when we're ready to discover the the intergalactic version of ourselves. He offers a, um, incredible guidance, protection and an escort into our, our multidimensional abilities. So he's the reason I was able to quickly learn to travel in the, in the quantum realm and, and meet these guides and also to meet other energies I needed to, to bring these guides in. And he also showed me past lives that were critical in understanding so that, um, I could connect the dots a little bit more. And then he, and then he helps to heal all of that as well. So he's an incredible presence and he's actually the guide of my current dog, Gigi. (laughs) And what's, what's kind of significant about this dog. Like if you look at all of them, to me, it's all in the eyes. So when I look in a dog's eyes, I can kind of tell what guide that dog is because you can see into the soul through the eyes. And um, this guide is really interesting because, you know, we think that dogs are unconditional love. (laughs) The dogs that came through with Eric are not unconditional lovers. (laughs) They're they're not what you would expect out of a dog. Um, So my dog just last night was mad at my husband because he didn't let her lick his bowl. So two hours later, when we went to bed, she would have nothing to do with him. And she usually cuddles with him, not me. She usually cuddles with him all night long. All night, she refused to even go to his side of the bed. Absolutely miffed with him because he wouldn't let her lick his, his bowl. And this to me is not my definition of unconditional love. I don't know about you, (laughs) but but these guys are are watching or listening. You do share pictures of all of these dogs that you've been talking about in the book and Gigi you've had on your YouTube channel, even the way you describe them. It's very palpable to feel these personalities shining through them. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It's, it's fascinating. He's, he's just not into the, the human, qualities. He's here to do a very specific job. So these dogs aren't going to be here to hold our hand. They're not going to be here to make us feel better. They're here to get their job done. They're here to move you quickly. So they're not going to make excuses for you when you balk or when you turn away from an opportunity, they're going to be there looking at you like, "Mm," you know, (laughs) Yeah, well, you know because, because it seems like as a pro- a byproduct too, Gigi just happens to have a personality that, like you were saying in your physical therapy office, everyone yeah. just loves her and she brings people together. And she, but it's not necessarily um, important for her to be cuddly to Mm-mm. 
right. mission in the world. She's, you. she's an ambassador. So she does bring people together. She does open people's hearts, but her job is not to, re um, reciprocate. Her job is to act strictly as leader, not as companion. There, that's a different container, right? Yeah. Like your boss or your leader is not someone you're going to go out and um, do yoga with or, you know, go on a walk with. It's someone that you really respect and you honor. And so sometimes they occupy a completely different place in your life than your companions or your friends that you hang out with, right? So, so interesting. it's a completely different container for these guys. Well, and so does every brings me to, to a good question. Does every canine have some sort of spirit guide working through them with the humans in their life? That's, that's a great question. What I have sh uh, been shown and what I've seen, it depends on the dog because some dogs are here on their own journey. Um, they're, they're more of a baby soul. So the animals, when they come through the animal kingdom, their first experience here on this planet is as a community soul. They don't have their own soul. That's why we see herd animals, you know, acting together as one because they share the same brain. They share the same soul. They share the same energy. Once this soul begins to evolve and also specifically to the canine, once this canine learns to connect to a human and they do share that love bond, then that helps that canine evolve into its own soul that makes sense. Yeah. So depending on where the dog is and that journey will determine whether it's capable of following the guidance of the canine guides. So wow. some of the dogs in our life are on their own journey. They haven't developed their own soul yet. And these dogs are easy to spot. They're real. They're, they're kind of spacey. Okay. They, um, they love to hang out with other dogs or not so much into you. Um, they don't really get the connection, the, the bonding connection between human and dog. They seem really immature as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't understand the big picture, you know, um, they're different than the dogs that are here to help coordinate the evolution of humanity. So those are going to be your more evolved souls of the canine. And those are the ones who are going to be working in cooperation with the canine spirit guides. With one of the 50 plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, excited to learn about the rest. Yeah, I'm excited to meet the rest. Uh, they've been sh kind of introducing themselves to me and I'm seeing animals in the next group, which will be the essential eight. They're, they've been showing me animals that don't exist on this earth plane. So this That's is going to be really interesting. Well, and it's, so, <laughs> it's so powerful the way that you talk about it too. In your work now, like you said, someone doesn't have to necessarily have their own dog maybe you yeah. don't like dogs. Maybe I'm, I'm kind of in a place similar to where you were previously, where I lost my dog a handful of years ago and I just oh. haven't felt ready to have another furry friend. Yeah. Um, kind of like you had articulated in the book, I'm kind of traveling yeah. a lot and doing a lot of things. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, I want to be fair. And so if someone wants to start working with this energy, what's the best way to start tiptoeing into it? I mean, first read the book. So yeah. That's the first things first. But yeah. After that. Yeah. And, and don't take, don't take that for granted. Like when you read the book, they're already working with you. The energy is already working with you. They're helping. And whatever you notice in the book, whatever makes you sad or makes you angry, makes you frustrated, agitated, that's the spirit of the book working with you. So those guides are churning things up for you already. So what I tell people to do when they read the book is to journal, highlight, take yeah. notes. If you're mad at me, write it down. Um, those are all messages for you. So, you know, I shared my story and it's a very neutral story. So if you're mad at me about that story, that's something for you to look at. Right. Yeah. Um, and I have a podcast about this very thing exactly what happened to somebody who read the book and they got really mad about the book and they, they expressed it in a review. And I'm like, Oh, this wow. is great because this is showing me what this person needs right now. 
And so I did a podcast over it so people could understand if this happens to you, this is what it means. But yeah, so when you read the book, be sure and pay attention, take notes, and you probably need to read it more than once. I, you know, I've had people who've read it four times and they still haven't grasped the entire concept of the book yet. Yeah. So work with it. The next thing you'll want to do is ask questions. If you have your own dog, start asking that dog questions. Who are you? Who's working through you? What message do you have for me? Um, and, and listen, just listen. You have to just be open. Don't judge anything that comes to your mind. Don't judge anything that you write down after you ask those questions. Just accept it, embrace it, and work with it. And um, of course, you could always work with me. You know, I do private sessions and I do group sessions too. Um, and we get down to it really quick. Like there's no guesswork. <laughs> well, so one of the it, other things in the book that you do a beautiful job of is as you're offering your story and offering the information, I love the way you positioned it as like, hey, I'm just going to say these things and you could take it or leave it and you could just enjoy it as a mystical story or you can take this on board like it's up to you so it's a beautiful yeah. way of offering it out there because we all have so much emotional healing and work to do while we're here as you know yeah and you know sorry go ahead no go ahead when you're working with someone in a one-on-one -on -one session how do you how do you start diving into that what does that look like oh it's so easy so easy so i meet as soon as i get someone on my schedule i tap in to find out, you know, what's, what's the story here? What do I need to know? See, I'm always asking questions. What do I need to know? Um, and so the guides will tell me, okay, this person's ready. If they're not ready, they'll tell me what needs to be done before I meet with this person. So I might write the, the client and say, okay, the guides know you're coming. They need you to prepare. I might give them a meditation to do because energetically, if you're not ready, even though your mind says you're ready, we have to get your energy moving. So some of us have such buried, deep trauma that we don't even know about that has to be shifted and, and loosened and prepared to be freed before the session. So they'll give me things that the client needs to do to get ready for that. Um, the other thing I do is before I get on my virtual call, you know, all of my sessions are done virt virtually. So before I get on the call with a client is I sit in that client's energy before I ever meet with the client. And I receive a download from the canine spirit guides about what the client needs to know. What is it that you're struggling with? And it's not just cognitively. What does your soul want you to know? So it could be about a past life. It could be about this life. I just recently did, um, not recently, but earlier this year, I did a reading and it was for a lady's concurrent life. Wow. So, um, you know, the galaxy, the quantum field is the limit. You know, there's so much more possible than we realize as humans. So whatever it is that you need to know, that's what they want me to share with you. And then they'll tell me which canine spirit guide is going to be working with you during this session. And it all depends on what needs to be cleared, what needs to be um what you need assistance with will determine which guide comes forward and volunteers their services for you. I had one, when I do one-on-one -on -one sessions, it's usually one guide at a time. But here recently I had a session where all four guides showed up wow. and worked with her simultaneously. And it was intense um, during the session. And um, she really felt it and was really tired for a couple of days. And then after that, she had, she'd struggled with MS for 32 years. After that, her MS pain was gone. Wow, so amazing. she had to process it. And then, and then she was um, relieved of her major complaint. But um, so when I get that download, I then get on the call with the client and I share with them what I've downloaded and they have the chance to offer, um, ask questions. And I, since I'm still connected with their energy and I'm, I'm connected with the canine spirit guides, I can share those channeled messages with them in real time. And then um, soon after that, we go right into healing. So the guide that, that's stepping forward to work with the client is offering instant healing for that client over those issues during that session. And it looks kind of like a guided meditation. I'd bring their energy in and I just describe to you 
what they're doing, what they're saying. Sometimes they're adjusting our energy field. Sometimes they're going to the to the place in the body that, where all this energy is being held and it has to just be exploded out of there. Um, some of the guides use crystal energy and, um, and some of them use plant medicine. I've been working a lot with plant medicine energy as well because that's very effective in, in um, eradicating blockages, just breaking up stagnant energy. Um, and then always at the end of this, we want to be sure once we've cleared the space, we want to be sure that our soul's energy is coming in and filling that space. We don't want to leave with just a cavity, right? Just an opening. We, cause we, then you're, you're just leaving it up to the cosmos as far as what is put back in that space. Right. So the guides will always help you to bring in more of your divine soul's frequency and energy especially to fill the places we just um, voided out just to make sure that's the energy that goes back in. And um, it's, it's, it's a profound experience and one-on-one, and -on -one, you know, are really nice because I can cater it to that person's requests or that person's major concerns. And so we get right into it. Um, and then usually they'll have the client work with that, meditation because it's recorded separately they'll have them work again with that meditation on their own to help um you know the integration of the shift sounds like some pretty profound and very customized work happens in those yeah. sessions now you said you also do some group work and we are lucky to get you at a time where you have an upcoming event just at the end of the month of march 2024 if you're listening to this when it gets released will you tell yeah. us a little bit about that event and, and what you've already been guided to create for that specific yeah. date? Yeah. Um, it's going to be a really impactful event. It's a half day workshop with Anthea and Oscar and, and they're both uh, divine energy. So Anthea's the divine feminine, Oscar's the divine masculine. And what they've shown me is they want to help people heal these parts of themselves and and blend them together so that we have a more balanced human being. So during the session, we'll work with them one at a time and you'll get to know more about them, a little more in depth about these guides and what messages they have to share with the group that's, that's within the room. And it's all virtual. So they'll share whatever messages those people in the group need to hear regarding their divine masculine and feminine. And, um, and then they're going to walk the group through, you'll get to work with each one individually. They'll walk them through a really intimate and yet profound spiritual shift. So it'll be like a guided meditation again. And the group sessions are really, really powerful because we have everybody coming together, co-creating this experience. Wow. Um, so they always surprise me with what they're capable of doing and, the people who attend, you know, I get a mixed bag. Some people have never done anything like this before. Some people are really skilled with this type of um, experience. And usually even the people that are total novices are going to feel something, even if they've never done meditation. I've had people, I've had people in the room, everybody saw the guide in front of them, even though they've never had an experience like that before. So it's a really... It, they help us to shift our energy together when we're working like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. another thing that's really important for us to understand is that when you make a commitment to an event like that, they're already working with you. Yeah. So they're already tapping into your energy. They're already sending me messages. I get previews for the, you know, the two weeks up to the event going, oh, we're going to do that. Oh, we're going to do that. You know, they're just constantly yeah. feeding me information. And um, I just go with it. I, the morning of the event, I just sit with them and I channel in what they're, they're planning on doing with the group. So until then, I don't know what the final, you know, the final guest count is going to be, who's going to show up and what's going to be necessary so I'm usually surprised because it can change, you know, two days before the event, it can change, you know, compared to the day of the event. So I wait until the last minute to get the instructions, but it's, it's incredible, absolutely incredible so what exciting. they're capable of. And yeah. We will be, for those of you who are feeling intrigued, it means potentially that your 
soul's already being worked with by these guys. Yeah. Take your interest to get you to this conversation. In the show notes, I will have all of the links for you to find all of the things. This is probably a little premature, but do you have any idea when we can expect the next book? The next book? <laughs> Clearly, it's going to be a series. You already kind of told us yeah. that in the, at the end. So. Yeah, it's it won't happen this year. I Well, you know, oh I God. say that, but I move in flow. So for all I know, I could have another one out by the end of the year. And that's so funny because my publisher called me today wanting to know if I was working on my second book yet. That's so funny. <laughs> like it or not, I feel like you probably are. Yeah, I'm 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 taking notes when I get them and cataloging them for future reference. Um, I just have I've been so busy promoting this book. I haven't had much time to sit and get any downloads for the second book. I don't even know what dogs are going to be in it yet, um, but it's going to be a lot different than the first one. Be the essential eight has a different motive and a different frequency. So they're kind of showing me it's going to be a little more magical and lighthearted. You know, the first book was a little hard. It was a little heavy because we had to do some hard things in the first book. Yeah, it was so, heavy, but in the best way. Because I feel like yeah. the, the the gold nuggets that you gave and the, the parts of your life, and I know you said in the book that there's even much more about your life that you oh, couldn't yeah. possibly include all of it, you know, the things that you'd experienced. But those nuggets, I feel like most people can see themselves in the emotions and the yeah. struggle, even if the story is different. So yeah. I think it was so necessary the way it came. Yeah, it, it was very necessary. And it, because I was healing while I was writing the books, that's, that's how the guides introduced themselves to me. And that's how they begin to work with me. And each time I had a healing experience with them, I had more of my own psychic gifts come out. So, and that's what's so critical is we have to peel the layers off and empty the tanks so that we can perceive and we can embody those higher versions of ourselves. So each time I went through a healing session and I went in the same order as the book. So I worked with wow. Anthea, then I worked with Oscar and then Oregon and then Eric. So as I progressed through the book at the very end, they said, okay, this is how you need to work with your clients. This yeah. is this is what you're going to be doing now. And I said, what? I thought I was just writing a book. I didn't realize that I was going to be doing the energetic work with the canine spirit guides. So after I published the book, that's when I had this gradual transition from physical healing into spiritual healing and energetic so healing. Cool. So it's been quite the trip. I bet. And I, I do feel like that's what happens often when we are, you know, having opening of our gifts and learning to work with them, we do go through our own healing journey as a yeah. required, <laughs> yeah. required stop on the, on the route, which is yeah. continuous, I think. Um, yeah. I really am just so grateful for you writing this book and going, going along with these guides who were telling you, you know, Hey, you're going to write this book. And it's, you know, you could have easily, you had option to resist or to, to not yeah. do it, but you showed up and, and did the work and lived the, lived the experience. And it really is, I don't even know how, I mean, other than divinely ordered, I, I don't know how else you were able to cram so much. It, it could have been three separate books all in itself with just yeah. your life story. And then the story of you know, the dogs and the dog training and how, how you illustrated each of the gifts and lessons through those experiences. It's really, really profound. So I highly encourage everyone and anyone uh, to read it. I'm going to tell you the Thank title you. again, but we'll have a link in the show notes. Canine Spirit Guides, yeah. The Healing Power of Man's Best Friend. Yeah. There oh. it is. Mm -hmm. It's backwards. Heavily but... tagged as you, as yeah. you see. Yeah, this is my teacher's model. model. <laughs> I love it. Um, I do something fun at the end of every interview episode that I didn't tell you about, but I'm hoping you're game for. Okay. Are you game to do what we call here the spirit speed round, which is four fun and easy questions for you about your journey? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay. The first question is, um, I'd love you to share one thing that really shocked you or was unexpected about all of this information as it came to you. I feel like there's so many things that you could say here, but yeah, it's hard to pick one. I know. Um, I think the most shocking thing was that 
I was so deeply undercover that I didn't have a clue who I was. Yeah. Like this is who I was in the beginning, but I had no idea. You know, for me, the I, I love that it was that way for you, even though it was probably painful to experience it because it really is so many of our journey that we didn't realize, you know, with the powers in us all along or what, whatever yeah. under the rainbow, you know, saying you want to say in there. So I think it's so profound that you didn't realize all along. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I would add to that, it's hard to pick one. Um, yeah. Everything happened for a reason and people say that, but they don't really yeah. believe it or see it. But I was able to literally see oh my gosh, now I know why that happened. Yeah. Because it's in black and white. So well, that was yeah. really, really clear through the book. And it was, you made it really easy to, you know, kind of like you said, consider your own life as the reader and think, yeah. oh yeah, you know, I, I can see how through Heather Lee's journey, these things all make sense, even though they seem so unrelated at the time, yeah. perhaps I can see in my own journey, this truth as well. So that was right. really powerful. Um, yeah. if you got to, I'm a medium, I don't know if you know this about me, but I read <laughs> so that's, that, where, yeah. that's where this question comes from. Okay. Uh, if you got to spend a day in the spirit world, you got the full tour, you got to spend time with everyone you've ever known who's crossed over and it's almost time to return to your life here on this side. And a guide tells you that you have one hour left and you can spend it with any soul who's on the other side. Who do you choose and why? Oh, well, I got to visit my a higher version of myself on a higher timeline who was doing this job with the animals over there. Only wow. her animals were like Pegasus, um, centaurs, dragons. I mean, all, all the animals, not just the earthly yeah. animals. She was the keeper. She is the keeper. It's a concurrent life. She is the keeper of all the animals. And I visited her three times and I never get enough. I want to, I have so many questions. <laughs> I want to oh, go back. Around. I want to visit her, girl. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Well, that sounds amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I love that yeah. answer. Um, even though we have spiritual gifts, we have very human lives. What is one quirky thing about you that people might be surprised to learn? Like I'm a loner. Yeah. I mean, I'm still kind of a loner. Um, this work has forced me to come out of that a little bit, but I'm okay being totally alone and out in nature. I love that. Like that's a really, I think that's really special actually. Yeah. Um, will you leave us with one pearl of wisdom? What's one piece of advice that you wish that you had early on in your understanding of all of these gifts and abilities? Yeah. Healing is not meant to be hard. It's not meant to be a journey. We have the ability to heal instantly. And that's what the guides always want me to, to share with everyone. It doesn't have to be a process. That's what we've been programmed to think. That's and incredible. it limits us. Yeah. Yeah. You've shared so much with us already today. I know that I could keep you for many more hours. <laughs> I know. I, well, I could I talk forever. <laughs> Believe me. I would, I'm like, I have a whole list. Um, I would love to know if there's anything we didn't touch on today that you wanted to share. It's okay if there's not, but I just wanted to make sure. I'm um, in with you. And yeah. So, so offerings. one of the group offers I have is my own podcast that I do on YouTube. And those podcasts are channeled messages from the canine guides. And then, the last half of the podcast is a healing around that message. So um, people have access to experience the healing and the, the frequency of the canine guides when they attend those podcasts. So, um, you know, if, they, if they're curious about the canine guides and what that's like, they can check that out. It's on my YouTube channel. I will link that in the show notes as well. If you do go to Heather Lee's YouTube channel, you will get to see the amazing Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Her welcome video has her in it. And I did get to um, sit through and watch and receive healing from one of those podcast episodes oh. where you were channeling a message and, and yeah. sharing about um, an event that was happening in the world and did yeah. healing with that. So that those are really beautiful and powerful. So anyone who yeah. is even a little bit intrigued or interested in what you do, I highly recommend going to the show notes and, and getting that link. Yeah. That's really amazing that you offer those just 
just out there for anyone with yeah. no barrier to entry whatsoever. You yeah. can just go and, and receive it whenever. And Anthea also has offered a meditation for everybody on my webpage. There's a free meditation from Anthea. Wow. That's, that's really amazing. powerful. And that is, um, for those of you who, who may already know about this book, that is the guide who worked through Tori with you and several other of your yes. beautiful animals. She's the grandmother, the grandmother guide. The yeah. Yes. The nurturing, <laughs> loving, shepherding often. Yeah. <laughs> grandmother yeah. guide. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today and sharing your wisdom and all of these incredible gifts and understanding of an even deeper and more profound exponential way that our canine friends work with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for reading the book. It of course. It's a it lot a, to it me. It's a treat. Um, <laughs> thank you for sharing your light with us today. All right. Bye, everybody. So if you couldn't tell, I could have gone on talking to Heather for probably several podcast episodes worth uh, of, of interview times of, of episodes just because the, the way that her book is written, and that's really my introduction to her is, is through this book. I didn't know her previously. Um, the book is just so profound. Like we talked about in the episode, it's less than 400 pages and it's not a particularly like challenging read as far as like being hard to read. It's very conversational, very um, open and honest and raw in the way she talks about her experiences and her emotions. And I feel like we can all see ourselves in the emotions that she shares, but really the way she works in her experiences with the dogs of her life and how she can see through retrospect after having this profound awakening, how these different guides were working in her own life. I just think you're going to love the book. So highly, highly recommended. And as you guys know, I don't recommend a lot of books here. So um, take note. Uh, also, if you want to connect with Heather Lee further, check out the show notes for her website, for her um, link to the book, that the event that she has coming up, the YouTube channel with the free healings, everything is, is going to be listed in the show notes and will be right there for you. Um, I actually found her in a unique way. We were talking about it off recording, but I know that I was guided to her and guided to share her story and to share her with all of you. I went down a rabbit hole actually looking at someone else's podcast um, and then just kind of went through this interesting, nonsensical rabbit hole of Google search and somehow came to her work. And I actually thought it was something different when I came across it. I, I thought it was her helping us understand our, our animal spirit guides and how our dogs work with us as spirit guides, but it's so much more profound and layered and mind blowing than that. So I hope that you enjoyed today's conversation. Thank you for being here with me today. Again, another big thank you to Heather Lee Strom for coming on, being a luminary of our time and sharing her light and her wisdom with us today. Uh, as always, big hugs, lots of love. Bye for now from inside Spirit Speakeasy. Thank you.